today is Labor Day, and of course, it's a very important day. It's time for families to get together and to appreciate hard labor and to do what we can to continue fighting for workers' rights and people's rights and making sure that we have prevailing wage laws in place and, you know, just everything that can look out for the workers, workers' rights, safety, all those issues. Well, as you know, there are talks about getting rid of unions uh, and they say the right to work. What does right to work mean to you and uh, how do you analyze that? Well, right to work to me actually is a, is a killer because you're not paying workers, uh, you're not competitive, you're not fairly compensating them for projects that are being done. It's proven that if you pay cheap salaries and of course you're going to get cheap work and that's what we're trying to fight for. We're trying to fight for prevailing wage, wages that will help families to sustain, you know, uh, living conditions, good living conditions to help to stimulate their economies. Um, of course, if you put a working wage, uh, a living wage in, of course, they're going to make that pretty much uh, close to uh, minimum wage. And of course, nobody can live off a of minimum wage. Without uh, unions, there's no, uh, there's, there's no, um, uh, weekends, there's no prevailing wage, there's no public schools, there's no uh, public safety and of course we need all this in our economy to make sure that everything is fair and that's what we're trying to do, we're trying to fight for what's fair. We're tired of these 1% billionaire millionaires running things before no one 32 because we want our monies being spent on uh, politicians that are in office to take care of members or, or people in the community. We're tired of that status quo, same old good old boy system. We want what's right for the people in the community. We'll, we'll fight for that now. And what's your message for uh, Labor Day to everybody out there? Uh, basically, uh, Labor Day is workers fight for workers. We all got to support each other. If you work hard, then we need your support. Today they fight against workers. Tomorrow we have to fight against them. So let's just keep the fight going. When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? But the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. It is we who plowed the prairies, built the cities where they trade, dug the mines and built the workshops, endless miles of railroad laid. Now we stand outcast and starving, mid the wonders we have made, but the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Today is the annual Labor Day Parade and Picnic. Um, it's a celebration every day of Labor Day. And we, we think about and celebrate the uh, struggles and, and fights of working people throughout history that have helped create legislation, uh, regulation uh, to protect workers' rights, uh, safety on the job, good wages, benefits. Uh, for all workers, not just union workers, but the unions have been out in the forefront for, for decades uh, working to provide these rights and benefits for workers. What is the importance of today as in like a long-term struggle of uh, uh, workers to gain union and having union? Well, I, I think today is uh, it's just a show of solidarity, of unity. It's something that's done every year. We all gather for, you know, it's all for the same cause. But it's just, I think, it helps everyone to see that there are people from all walks of life, all different unions, uh, all different industries that are here uh, to show support for each other and that we're all united in the struggle for workers' rights in this country. Could you talk about the right to work? This is what the Republicans put in four words for. Anybody can work, but what is your take on that? Well, to me, it's a right to work for less. Uh, they claim it gives everyone the right to work, but basically it guts uh, union contracts, union rights. It gives employers uh, huge, huge uh, leverage, uh, benefits. Uh, they're able to employ workers for lower wages with no benefits, with no, no rights on the workplace rights. It just really undermines 
what has been built throughout history for workers' rights uh, for the you know since the early 1900s. And uh, any last comment you would like to make? I just think that um, we're proud to be here. We're proud of our history, all unions. We're proud of the work that we've done, and we're united. And we're going to work, move forward, and work hard to not only maintain what we have but to move forward and, and gain more rights and bring more people into the unions. Solidarity forever, for the union makes us strong. We don't hold unions that they never toil to earn, but without our brain and muscle not a single wheel can turn. We can break their body power, gain our freedom when we learn that the union makes us strong. We're very excited here at UTLA to join together with our brothers and sisters in the labor movement. And I think 2012 is an especially important and significant time for the whole labor movement and all of labor organizations and unions. And the reason it's so important is because I think we've never seen the kind of attacks that we're seeing in terms of labor unions right to exist paycheck deception types of, of um, initiatives. We see attacks on collective bargaining, on pensions. We are seeing a whole onslaught, very insidious ways of trying to paint unions as greedy members, as making a lot of money, really ridiculous things when we're about supporting labor rights. And so in this time, in 2012, Hundreds, a hundred years after the beginnings of many labor unions, we are fighting for our survival, basic rights. The right to be a union and collectively bargain is being attacked. We see this in states across the nation, such as Wisconsin and Ohio. We see paycheck deception and trying to oppress and keep voters from voting, as in Oklahoma, as in Alabama. We're seeing attacks on our union members. So it's critically important this year. And uh, could you talk about what the Republicans have put forward, the right to work? What does that mean to you and does it counter what you guys are fighting for? The right to work that the Republic's, Republicans are pushing for is an attempt to just decimate unions and say that it's voluntary to be a union when the very nature of the labor movement, the very nature of why labor unions formed was because the workers' rights have not been protected. Management can decide how much they pay them, what their hours are, what their holidays are going to be, if any, what their pay is. Um, they can determine working conditions. So the worker has been oppressed. The worker has been um, their rights have been severely, they don't have, limited. So on this, on this time, we're finding men, the Republicans trying to push to, so that labor unions cannot exist. And they have to, they vote so that to be voluntary, they vote so that they don't have to pay dues. They vote to try to weaken the union movement, labor unions. How do counter that? What do, what do we have to do to uh, strengthen unions, uh, especially with UTLA? Let me send it. Well, let me tell you about UTLA. UTLA is uh, an education, public education. It's been under attack for over 40 years, starting from the um, Third World Bank and 40 years ago in Chile, and then moving on to the No Child Left Behind Act. And there's an attempt to privatize and that the wealthy can buy education. And they don't even have a teacher's credential and they can control a public education system so that those who are systematically um, at risk, those who are in poor neighborhoods, have a hard time because they do not welcome these students. So UTLA is one of our public school systems that opens its doors to every single child. Doesn't matter what you look like, how much your family makes, and our union is being under attack because they are take defunding public education. They are taking money away, public dollars, 
are being taken away from our unions and put into private choice, private initiatives, vouchers, and it severely hurts. That's why we're pushing yes on 30, which is a ballot measure in California that funds public education. It will bring in about $8 billion into the state. 220 will go into LA Unified School District, the second largest union in the nation. We need this money because we're already, they're going to put furlough days, they're cutting our school year so our students have less school. They're cutting resources and services like nurses and counselors. Our teachers have the highest class size in the nation. Right now we're 47th in per pupil spending. California needs public money, public dollars to keep going. So that's why we are under attack. And there's another, another initiative, No on 32, which seeks to try to get people to vote against teachers voluntarily giving money to public candidates. And we are already outspent by corporations 15 to 1. And with this initiative, they have loopholes. So it just hits unions so that we have no political voice. We are silenced. They are trying to silence teachers. They're trying to silence labor. And we will have nothing to do with that. We will fight back with all that we are on this Labor Day 2012. Thank you. Any last comment? You want? What we're saying is we want everybody to wake up because what is happening in this country, we are going back on the, the rights, the human dignity of all human beings in this nation, a civilized nation needs to fight for those who are oppressed and to have for the common good of all people to have the basic rights and services and that's what we're up against this year and we ask you to join us in this fight and thank you very much thank you. In our hands is placed a power greater than their hoarded gold, greater than the might of atoms magnified a thousandfold. We can bring to birth a new world from the ashes of the old, for the union makes us strong. I'm a member of the LA Harbor Labor Day Parade Coalition. This is my third year as an active member. It's a volunteer organization. And uh, we're here at our 32nd annual Labor Day Parade. I'm really proud of it. I think it really went well this year. It's growing. What we want to do here is we want to continue to grow the Labor Day Parade. We want to have unions become part of the fabric of American society again. We want to be rewoven into the fabric because unions are so important for the working man to maintain a standard of living, a middle class, to help out individuals with medical insurance, benefits, etc. So that's why we're here today. We're here to promote labor unity and the importance of unions. So, uh, as you know, uh, the Republicans have an initiative called Right to Work. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? How does it deal with counter what unions do? The Right to Work state uh, philosophy is basically that gives individuals an opportunity to not to be participating in the union. The thing about right to work is that members that are part of a union are fee paying members. They pay the dues and the other members don't pay dues but they get the same benefits. It's basically a poison pill that was put into document into the policies years ago to destroy unions. And we are against that right to work state. We believe all unions should have a right to unionize and all members should be fee paying members to pay their way to help us stay strong as union members. Can you talk about the significance of unions and labor and labor day? Yes. Well the significance basically this is a celebration of us working people, of us a celebration of the working people, the working man, the working woman, a celebration of labor. Because here in our society we celebrate wealth. 
We celebrate people that are extra rich, but we don't celebrate the working man, the guy who drives the buses, cleans the toilets. So we're here to celebrate those people, clean the houses. So we're here to celebrate ourselves here. And the majority of people in this country are working people. So we're here in celebration of the labor that we contribute to society. What's your last comment for today? And our last comment is that I hope that more and more people come and join unions and band together and make the union movement strong so we can make all of the working class strong once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. For the union makes us strong. In our hands is placed a power greater than their hoarded gold, greater than the might of atoms magnified a thousandfold. We can bring to birth a new world from the ashes of the old, for the union makes us strong. Today is a day of solidarity. We call it Labor Day. It uh, goes way, way back into the early part of the 20th century and it's where all unions and working people come together and uh, rejoice uh, about their success and uh, talk about their struggles on how to move forward not just protect what we have but to bring the message of the labor movement to to non-union people and to people that don't have what we have and we'll try to use it as a way to spread the gospel of the of the trade union movement you know, throughout the community. So what do you have that we don't have? Well, what we enjoy, first of all, is we have rights on the job that non-union people don't have. We don't have employment at will. Uh, we have a contract where uh, the uh, contract provides for due process, where uh, people can't be summarily discharged or, t or terminated. Yeah, and if, if need be, uh, we can go before a panel or an arbitrator and have a hearing on any discipline. We also have a say over our wages, hours, and working conditions. We don't have a situation where we just have the uh, employer or the owner saying, do as I want you to do or don't let the screen door hit you when you leave. So we do have some things of uh, significant value that people that are not organized do not have. All right, so and then uh, what are your hopes for people who are not union? What, what needs to happen with them? Well, we, ho we hope that people that aren't union uh, take some inspiration from what the, uh, the union people have and take some steps to uh, take control of their own destiny and make some changes in their workplace and in their community. This is all about power, principally power to the 99 and not the 1% and we represent the organized part of the 99. So when we're reaching out to everybody in the hood or in the communities and saying, come with us, partner with us, and let's move forward. Let's not just let uh, the system, let's not just let unregulated casino capitalism determine, determine your destiny. You don't have to do that, and, and we have the remedy for that, and that's called unionization. And so, Unionization, what does, what does it do for society? Well, what unionization does is it creates a force on behalf of the 99% and the people that don't have money and don't have property that basically live by their labor. And so what it does is it creates a countervailing force against the uh, corporate entities and the conservative ideological entities that want to keep people down. So what we're really about is extend, extending power to the people and to the masses of people and make a change and hopefully make a change in a non-violent fashion, but make a change. That's what we want. So then talk about, as you know, there are initiatives about the right to work. Okay, talk well, right now, California is a union state. That means if you belong to a union or if you have a collective bargaining agreement, you, you belong or pay a fee. There's people that don't like that and want to change that and let people free ride where they can be in a union and not have to pay for it. In other words, those that pay, pay for those that don't belong, just like, uh, you know, 
be like if you were in a bar or in a, in a restaurant and you were with some people and they insisted on you paying every time. Well, that wouldn't be fair. And so what we're is about fairness. And so we want, if we're representing people, we believe that they should pay for the representation. It shouldn't just be on those that are accepting responsibility. So what, what's going on now in California is, is we have Prop 32, which is phase one of right to work for less. If you look and see what people have in right to work states, you'll see that their wages and benefits are 30 or 40 percent less than the people who have uh, right, uh, who have union security in their states. So we don't want that in California, and we're fighting against it. What the uh, some of the people that uh, have a lot of money want to shut down the working people's voice, and what they want to do is is they want to prevent us through. Uh, stopping our way of uh, raising money, which is primarily through payroll deduction, they want to stop that. And uh, if, if that's stopped, then the labor voice and the voice of the uh, progressive sector will be much, much less uh, loud. It'll be quieter. And then that will set the stage for right to work for less, which is basically a big time power grab by uh, the ideologues and the 1% that want to have basically everything, and us have very little. So you said that was a step one. What is the step two here? Step two will be in two years, they will put on the ballot a uh, right to work for less, and we won't have the resource or the money to defeat it. So in other words, they're trying to defund the labor movement. And then uh, talk about, uh, what is any last comment you want to make about today's significance of today and what's going on? Well, I think the significance of today is, is the fact that people can come together and make a better life. And that's what this is about. Uh, we can have a we can make this society better. We can, we can make all societies better. And we can take some steps to start to dismantle the war machine that's, that's uh, promoting war and wasting a tremendous amount of resources as well as lives. So really what today is about is people coming together and changing society for the better. That's what this is about today.